Hey everyone, it's Maria here. As you can see, <laughs> probably see from my face, I'm still a little bit under under the weather. Uh, I have a bit of temperature um, and I might be a little bit gross today with my runny nose, but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so I'm actually just going to make sure that I have some tissue <laughs> available. So let's get to today's live Q&A. I have some amazing questions in, and so I want to make sure that we're covering as many as we can possibly can in this short period of time. So the first question is, I had a very chaotic childhood. No abuse, but I couldn't trust my parents to be there for me. As a result, I find it difficult to trust people. It hampers my relationships. As an INFJ, how can I learn to trust others? Okay, so this is a fantastic question and one that really stands out to a lot of INFJs, INFPs. In particular, we often have a lot of trust issues uh, simply because a lot of our ch childhood was chaotic. Um, not you don't have to have an abusive childhood to feel like your um you can't relax around people, you can't trust other people. So, you know, it's completely understandable. What you're going through and what you're describing is is very, um, very common for a lot of INF types. Um, so how you can start to trust others, how you can learn to trust others. There, there are a couple of things that I want to kind of highlight. Uh, number one being uh, trusting yourself, so learning how to trust yourself, knowing that you'll always be there no matter what. So, so it kind of preempts the whole um, space of I can't trust others um, to not hurt me because if you become unhurtable, if you trust yourself, and you uh, you get yourself to a space where you're able to, uh, you know you'll be okay no matter what, then uh, then trusting others becomes a lot easier. Uh, but that's just kind of step one, because you still have to learn how to trust other people. And something that I, um, I've i come to realize, and certainly there are a lot of books that write about this too, is um, trust isn't a black and white concept. So, so just because you trust somebody in some ways, it doesn't mean that you have to trust them with everything. And you are completely in your right to trust a person to a certain degree and then not beyond that or you are completely entitled to not trust a person at all so the question really becomes what are you trusting them with so instead of thinking about trust as like a black and white you either have it or you don't let's start looking at the shades of trust um, it's very, very understandable that trust issues uh, affect your relationships because, well, obviously, if you can't trust your partner, um, it's very difficult to build a, a calm, uh, collected, uh, trusting uh, relationship. And the same goes for your home life as well. So let's just say that you get involved with somebody, you move together, move in together, and then you think about, okay, I'm, I'm like, just as in my childhood, I'm always waiting for some chaotic thing to happen at home, which means that you can't relax at home. So you can't kind of, you, it's easy if you've had a childhood where you couldn't relax at home that you projected onto your current situation as well, without necessarily even being aware of it. So when you realize that you want to do some work with this trust and you want to build tr trusting relationships with other people, one of the main things to, to recognize is to separate, that there's a separation between how your childhood was and, and, and the people that are in your life currently. So your partner or your, you know, the people that you're looking to trust, they are, are not necessarily like your parents were. They might be a little bit chaotic, that's, you know, fine, but they're not your parents. And it, it's a really good thing to re recognize that it, it may sound really simple, but we are usually like if we are disturbed um, uh, by if we're affected and disturbed by our childhood experience, like you would have had with your chaotic, you know, home environment, then it's it's very, very normal to say, um, you know, this is what's normal. This is the normal experience of every person. Well, you're having a subjective experience, right? But then it's very easy to project that normalcy onto um, 
your now life. Um, so just separating, just saying, hey, this is what my childhood was and now I'm building something else. So having that separation, which then allows you to visit the childhood chaos when you feel well enough to get into it, you're visiting it, rather than bringing the childhood chaos with you to your current reality. So just saying, okay, chaos, this is what my childhood was like. Thank you very much for that. That really kept me safe. You know, hypervigilance and inability to trust kept me safe because I didn't then end up trusting anybody. So I didn't get hurt. So that kept me safe. But right now I'm going to take a step away from these trust issues and I'm not going to bring you with me. I'm going to leave you there and I'm going to go over here. And then at, from time to time, I'm going to come and visit you and we can talk and we can reminisce and we can, you know, get to know each other in a different way, from different angles, from different perspectives. And then we're going to be separate once more. So you create this uh, space between what happened in, as, your as a child and, and who you are now. And what that does is it, it allows you to create a whole new reality over here where you don't have to be uh, living in chaos, where you can order things, where you have the power to say, no, this is right for me and this isn't right for me. This is how I'm living and this is not how I'm living. So you're not bringing the chaos with you. You're saying chaos, thank you very much. Distrust, thank you very much for keeping me safe. I'm going to be over here building a life. And don't expect it to be perfect. So don't expect that separation to be perfect. It's going to be messy. It's like separating from a codependent relationship. You know, it's messy. It's like separating from a co codependent relationship with kids. It's going to be messy. <laughs> so just, I'm just going to bring this table a little bit closer to me. So yeah, so just... Um, Think about it from that perspective. Um, if you so so over here now, you can then start trusting or start building a trusting uh, kind of set of um, kind of rules that you want to live by, and you can start building a, a more trusting environment. I really recommend that you read a couple of books. Um, there's a actually two books from Stephen Covey: The Speed of Trust and also Smart Trust. And those books will give you a really good understanding of what trust actually is and how it operates and how you do have the power. So that's what I would say, you know, start with the fact that, you know, you said as an INFJ, how can I learn to trust others? Start with trusting yourself. Then start with the separation. So you understand that you have the power to live a life that is separate from what your childhood experience was. And then finally, actually study trust so that you build a really beautiful, uh, trusting, healthy environment over here that you have power over because you might not have had power over your childhood. So that's what I would say. And it's, that's not a, a specifically an INFJ issue. Um, that, of course, uh, works for INFPs as well.